Lately, it seems that my F350 has been taking a little bit longer to start than I think it should. What do you say we investigate the cause together in this edition of The Trainer? This episode of The Trainer is brought to you by Autel. Be sure to visit them at www.autel.com. My personal vehicle is this 2005 Ford F-350 6.0 liter diesel, and I don't drive it much. But when I do, I've noticed that when I first start it up, it takes a little longer to crank than I think it should. Now, if it's already warmed up, the problem is almost non-existent. With no check engine light illuminated, it could just be my imagination, or it could be something that is just starting to show itself. And with a long trip coming up, I really don't want to take any chances. Let's start by connecting the Autel MS919 scan tool to see if the ECM has any information to share. Anytime I connect a scan tool to a vehicle, I always perform a full system scan. I want to know if there are any other issues I need to be aware of, and if this were a customer's vehicle, I'm sure you'd like to do the same for them. Looks like I've got a P0675 stored, and according to the tool, it's identified as cylinder number five, glow plug circuit. Well, I think I'm gonna need a little bit more information than that. Anytime you're troubleshooting a diagnostic trouble code of any kind, you first wanna make sure that you understand how the system you're troubleshooting operates. And this means that you might need to spend some time with your service and information system reading up on the theory and operation. You also want to make sure that you research the code criteria. What is it that the controlling module is seeing or not seeing that is causing it to make that pass-fail decision? If you take the time to do your homework now, you'll find yourself spending less time troubleshooting later. Let's see what the intelligent diagnostics function on the tool can add. I'm especially interested in the DTC analysis feature. This gives me a great start in understanding what I'm going to be troubleshooting. Now, this information added into the information I learned from my service information system I think I have a pretty good idea of the diagnostic path I want to take. Follow along with me here. Diesel engines are compression ignition engines. That is, they rely on compression pressure and the inherent heating of the air-fuel mixture to initiate combustion. Glow plugs are used to preheat the mixture when the engine is cold to make starting easier. In my Ford's case, the ECM doesn't control the glow plug operation directly. It does through, through a module that we really haven't talked about yet, the GPCM, or Glow Plug Control Module. We can use the MS919 VCI's scope function to see this module in action. When commanded, the GPCM sends battery voltage to the individual glow plugs. On time is determined by the ECM, primarily in response to engine oil temperature and barometric pressure. Now, just because the glow plug lamp has been turned off, it doesn't necessarily mean that the circuit has been turned off. In some cases, the GPCM can go to a secondary mode where less current is being drawn, but the glow plugs are still maintained in a warm state. The entire glow plug cycle will last a maximum 120 seconds, not including any post-cycle activation that occurs once the engine has been started and is limited to 180 seconds 
by the GPCM regardless of the ECM's commands. The ECM tests the operation of the glow plugs by performing a key on engine running self test. It asks the glow plug control module to monitor the glow plugs and the related wiring and to report any defects it finds back to the ECM. Now, if the ECM is told that there's a defect somewhere in the circuit or the component, it will turn on the check engine light. Now, keep in mind that the ECM is the only module on the vehicle that has that authority. The DTC analysis includes a list of possible causes for the failure. The glow plug circuit may be open, shorted to ground, or shorted to voltage, or the glow plug itself may have failed. If my troubleshooting is going to require me to check an electrical circuit, then I first need to make sure that I review the associated wiring diagram. The glow plugs are controlled individually, but are located by bank with each bank independent of the other. Battery power to the plugs is routed through two battery feeds, one for each bank, and protected by a pair of fusible links. In addition to these connections, there is an ignition power feed to the GPCM. An ECM control connecting the ECM to the GPCM and an ECM monitor allowing the GPCM to report any faulted vines to the ECM. I think I have all that I need now to determine my diagnostic plan of attack. The great thing about the MS919 scan tool is that it is more than just a scan tool. The VCI module also houses a digital multimeter and digital storage oscilloscope. This gives me a lot of flexibility in how I proceed. The first thing I want to do is test the condition of the batteries. The glow plugs draw a lot of current, so I have to make sure that the batteries are up to the task. And battery condition is also critical to the 6.0's ability to start. If the engine can't crank over fast enough, then it can't build sufficient oil pressure, and that's what's required to operate the injectors. First, I'll disconnect both battery negative cables to isolate them for testing. But before I do, I'm going to connect the Autel BTMS memory saver to the vehicle so that I can keep the memories of the various modules intact. Now, it's not a big deal on this old truck, but it can be a real big deal on many of the late model cars and vehicles that you service. Simply insert the BTMS memory saver into the diagnostic link connector and then connect it to an alternate 12 volt power supply whether that's a jump box or another battery. Then I'll use the Autel BT506 battery tester to test the condition of both batteries. When using this tool, or one like it, be sure to input all the correct data parameters or your test results will be invalid. With the condition of the batteries verified, I'm now going to use the VCI's multimeter function, specifically its ohm meter, to measure the resistance of the glow plug circuit on a known good glow plug from the GPCM to ground. Note that there are two connectors at the GPCM. Perform a visual inspection of the connector. Look for signs of contamination, corrosion, or damage to the pins that could result in a loose connection. Do the same for the GPCM side of the connection. Use the camera on your phone to take a picture of the connector and then blow it up. That can help you catch problems that your eyes alone may miss. Using the multimeter function of the VCI, set the meter to measure resistance. Then touch the leads together in order to zero the meter. Place one meter lead on the negative battery cable end and place the other meter lead at the connector pin for any of the suspect good glow plugs.
you can find out which ones are which by using a pinout diagram like this one. And be sure to use a test probe that will not damage the connector pin or the connector itself. The specified resistance for this test is less than 2 ohms. Now to measure the resistance on the suspected bad circuit, that is the one for the number 5 glow plug. This reading indicates an open circuit. It can be caused by a failed glow plug or an open condition somewhere in the circuit path. Next, let's see what happens when we move our test leads to the subharness connector and repeat our tests. Remember to make sure that you inspect both sides of the connector for any signs of damage. The open circuit reading still exists, so the fault must lie between the subharness connector and the glow plug, or the glow plug itself has failed. And even though only number five tested bad with 150,000 miles on the vehicle, I'm going to go ahead and replace all of the glow plugs on the truck. If one glow plug has failed, the others are likely to soon follow. And even if they don't, the difference in resistance between the new and the old may cause the GPCM to set DTCs anyway. And that could mean a comeback. The subharnesses are also original equipment, and with 150,000 miles on them, they're getting brittle. I'll replace them as well so I don't have to do this job again. While this turned out to be a relatively easy diagnosis, it was made that much more so by the versatility of the Autel MS919. If you'd like more information about this tool or any of the others that I used in today's videos, be sure to visit www.autel.com. And as always, thanks for watching.